Hi, everyone. Welcome back. We're doing our podcast again. Woo! I'm so excited. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to do a podcast for a free special podcast for the final season. I can't believe it. Like, I, I actually, like, I'm, it's just now setting in that it's airing every week now. Is that weird? Like, no. It I'm doesn't fine. feel like it was. Like, I just now realized, wait, it's airing now. What? <laughs> yes. It's so weird. And it's, it's amazing. I'm excited, but yeah. I'm, like, sad because I'm like, no end. But also, mm-hmm. I want to see everything that's going to happen. So, I was wondering if you had any predictions on if it's going to be one core or two core. That's a good question. I I am still confused about how many episodes it's even going to be. Yeah. No one knows. That's, yeah, I'm so nervous, but like I I trust them because they're still going at like the pace they always have been. They so still- my guess is that it's going to be between. It's not going to be one core. It's not going to be just 13 episodes. I don't think because that would. You'd have to cut so much out. I did the math and I was like, it has to be at least 18 episodes. <laughs> yeah. So, That's what I'm hoping. Well, anyway, we should probably introduce ourselves. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kyo in anime and uh, my co-host is Prince Jessica. She, you just heard her talking. Hello. There you go. Uh, I am also here. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so we talked about Fruits Basket season two. It's because it was all like new and we watched the old Fruits Basket. We have read the manga. Watched the second one, talked about the second season, talked about it. Now we're on the third one, and we just kind of talk about the episodes and fangirl about it and analyze it. And yeah, <laughs> so and it's gonna be mostly spoiler free. And then at the end, we'll have spoilers. That's what we always do if you want to talk about something. So yeah, we're just gonna talk about the first episode, which um, I actually saw like you saw it in when it premiered before, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, we both saw it in English before. The Japanese, but anyway, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, it was just a whole nother banquet. It's first episode, and um, so it starts out with like Toru and like the whole like she's speaking about like how she's gonna hold another banquet, and the whole like I don't know what you call it, but like where you see God and the animals kind of cool mm-hmm. thing. And so it starts out like that, and so it's kind of like you know, giving us back to the whole idea of the curse and. Mm-hmm. I liked how Tori was introducing it because, I don't know, it just makes you think how she wants to help break the curse. It's like a repeat of episode one. Yep. But it actually, like, starts off right where, like, we left off, where Tori's just like, oh my gosh. Um, the funny part about that is that Toru seems so much more shook by Akito being a girl than Kuruno's curse being broken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's <It's>, like, what? <laughs> yeah. I think it's funny how some people, like, obviously already, like, knew just from watching like and they didn't really pick up that they thought the Akito was a boy and they're just like I thought everyone yeah. was a girl like <laughs> yeah they kind of messed it up in the adaptation because they barely ever said he at referring to Akito yeah. they yeah. only did it like twice because like we know that the only people who know that Akito is a girl are um Shigure, Ayame, Hattori, and Kurano um, yeah it kind of goes and like so that. why would everybody else not be referring to Akito as he <laughs> you know kind of like you said at the beginning it shows like Show, well, it does show, like, Karano, Shigure, Ay- Ayame, and Hattori all go, like, wake up from their dreams. Uh, the dream they had where, like, they saw Akito. Um, mm-hmm. so, you know, see you soon. So, yeah, they all knew. But And then, like, we have the opening, which is so pretty. I love the opening. Oh, uh, yeah. Home is still my favorite, but this one, oh, yeah. I really love it, too. And we yeah. got to see a, a, a big Momiji in the opening. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I gotta tell you. <laughs> I was like, oh. Um, yeah, new Momiji is gonna be big. Hooray. Um, now Literally. It's, now it's like, it's not a spoil anymore, because I can just say it, because it's in the opening. Mm-hmm. That's good. But, like, so I saw the English, and then I watched the Japanese, and the English one didn't have the opening yet, so. Mm-hmm. But I got, like, I was at work, and I saw pictures of the opening, and I was like, oh, crap, I shouldn't have seen that. And I got, <laughs> and I was just like, I was like, I saw a picture I shouldn't have seen. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It it was really visually pretty. Mm-hmm. The only thing is, like, I feel like the end is so weird. It just like cuts off at the end. <laughs> yeah. I, it's I The like, song is really good, but then it just like stops. And I'm like, wait, what? I noticed that too. And then we go, we go into like, yeah, Kurono just explaining how like Akito was raised as a, pretty much a boy or male. And uh, he explains about. Ren, which so we finally get to see mm-hmm. and like know the name at the same time, you know, Ren <laughs> come out. Yeah. 
Her voice was so good in both the sub and dub. Yeah, I agree. I like both of her voices. But there was one thing I thought was really interesting I noticed, which I'd never noticed before, was it's not that big a deal, but, you know, I analyze stuff. And, like, so the first time Toru, like, met Akito, Yuki, you know, like, comes running. And he's like, what did uh, he do to you? And she's like, oh, I'm just saying hello. And the same thing happens here with, like, Oh, Hattori. oh my gosh, that's so good. Yeah, Hattori and uh, uh, Rin. Rin's, like, oh. Rin's, like, talking. Naki just, what are you doing? And he's like, oh my gosh, I gotta tell my friends about that. That's so good. You need to just, tweet that out. Yeah, and it just shows how, like, like traumatized that Akito is of Rin already. Because uh, you know mm-hmm. how he is of Akito. So, like... And it, it's kind of like the cycle of abuse. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, yeah. somebody who's abused becomes the abuser. And, uh, but yeah, we find out uh, Rin's Akito's mother, and they kind of bring up pretty much how they argue about the bond, like how it's not a obviously, it's, in a way, Ren's right, it's not a healthy bond. And, mm-hmm. Um, but like, then we go for like the choke, like, we're like, oh, cool. <laughs> it's one of those <laughs> changes, like, with the true form mark. Yeah, I was like, okay, that was a little uh, too aggressive, but like, <laughs> yeah, they went flying like 10 feet in the air. Yeah, because I was, and I checked because I was like, did, did that happen in the manga? And it's like, no, no, it didn't, <laughs> it definitely didn't. It's the same as Kyo throwing Haru off the off into the water. Um, I came to the conclusion that the the anime has a lot of eating because I remember people said Kyo eat, <laughs> yeah. Yo, eat Toru, no. <laughs> yeah. But uh, then we have, like, Hatori was there, so, like, he pulls her off. Thank God. We bring up uh, Akira, which we only barely, we barely get to see him, but um, it kind of just clues in to that character, and I can't wait to see more of him. And Yeah. But then, yeah, it goes into how they all, all the older Zodiacs had a dream, and... Ritsu, like, had the dream, but was too young to, like, remember it or something, or... Yeah, just another way to say F you to Ritsu. No, right. The show. <laughs> uh, and Ritsu was there, but he doesn't remember. Okay, bye. I think that was... It's fine. It was in the manga, too. Yeah, it was. Sorry. It's just funny. Kurno points out that Akito is also, you know, struggling and be- being abused and having, you know, like... She's a crying little girl, is what he pretty much said. And Hattori helps her, and she's crying mm-hmm. for the, her stupid mom. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, um, you know, the stuff with Akito, mm-hmm. the gender being revealed, can be, um, like, kind of misinterpreted or kind of interpreted, right? Like, there's two things here. It's like, one, yes, the show does think that Akito is more sympathetic because she's a girl. Mm. Um. And, like, you know, girls, you know, are helpless in a way. Like, that is partially a little bit there. But then mm-hmm. a big part of it is, like, you know, that she was forced to be a man when she didn't want to, basically, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. like, obviously, Fruits Basket was made a long time ago. And, you know, there are those elements of, like, you know, men, gender roles and stuff. And her being a girl makes her more sympathetic because, you know, poor girl. Like, that's there. But I don't think that's the main thing. It's, like, about no. her being forced to live a different way. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. I was, like, forced to live, like, as a male, which is, like, obviously, what? Like, <laughs> what's Yeah. Cool? What gets me is the next part is, like, where Toru doesn't know what to say. And, like, that's a huge part because mm-hmm. it's, like, she always knew what to say. And <gasps> that's what I was thinking, too. Like, she's always been the girl to be like, my mom always told me to blah, exactly. blah, blah. <laughs> you know? So like, season one Toru is gone. Yeah, it's, like... That was a huge part, and um, but then uh, Kurno walks away, and we see uh, Reen, not Ren, Reen. I got we gotta say yeah. that it's different now. <laughs> anyway. I know I'm probably gonna keep saying Ren and call. I'm gonna be like Ren, 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 Ren. Anyway, but she's like really angry. That's all we really see of her, and like because she just mm-hmm. sees Toru crying, and I mean Toru crying is like. What'd you do to my precious sunflower? Anyway. <laughs> yeah. But then, yeah, Karina comes back to Akito, which is an awkward scene where she, like, slaps him and kisses him. Yeah. And she's, like, crying. It's like, oh, God, Akito, you need therapy. Then I'm pretty sure Hana comes. Or, like... Yeah. Da-da-da-da. Da-da-da-da. Yeah. She says... Oh, whatever. <laughs> Ja-ja-ja-ja in the dub. I mean, sub. <laughs> oh, and then Toru's scarf flies off before that. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> in the wind. She takes Toru in and calls Yuki and asks if they can have a 
what was it nightgown festival <laughs> yeah <laughs> And then so Yuki, Yuki's already like, yeah, that's fine. But he's already kind of like, that's weird and a little worried because <laughs> it's Yuki. Ana's always flirting with Toru. It's so funny. I know. <laughs> uh, and then Shigeri pops out and is like, who's that? Who's on the phone? And he's like, finds out and he's like, oh my, I didn't think it would be that hard on her or whatever. Um, but then Yuki's like, oh, it's okay. I'll cook. <laughs> Shigeri flakes out. He's like, don't cook. You can't do it. Yeah. Just... Should have gotten Kyo to cook. Oh, yeah. well, I guess he was out. Yeah, yeah, he was out walking, at least. Yeah. I don't know brooding. Why. Maybe he, you know, he was on his nightly stroll. You know how cats are. <laughs> so uh, we did get to see uh, Hana's mom. I always get her and Hiro's mom confused. They look so similar. They have the same yeah. personality, basically. They like are, are they like twins? Like, what the hell? They look so similar. <laughs> That's very true. They are very similar. They even have, like, wavy hair. Like Yeah, like, the same color hair, too, I'm pretty sure. But uh, then we also get to see uh, Megami for a little bit. But Hana sits down with Toru, and pretty much Toru tells Hana about Kurono being, like, Uo's Kurono, you know, and mm-hmm. how she just, how she didn't know what to say to him, because he has to help someone else right now, you know, and... Uh, then Hana brings up how uh, she's worried about Toru and mm-hmm. because she always takes all the kindness, or she always gives all her kindness and doesn't think of herself like kind of like how Karina's doing. So she compares the mm-hmm. two. And there's the great like visual metaphor of like yes, the, the, the being crushed, but it's like her scarf getting ran over and yeah. when Kyo finds it, it's so good. I freaking love that scene. That's my favorite scene in the episode. <laughs> oh my gosh! When the when also when the camera like pans around him like 360 or whatever. Yeah. Like, that shot is so good. It's so well animated. But um, then uh, Uo comes in, and she was listening the whole time, because Megami told her to, I guess, and, like, <laughs> to hide and listen. They make up, and, like, Uo just pretty much says, like, you're not useless. They have a, a bonding moment, <laughs> I guess you can say. Yeah. It's so, also, Uo's fit is immaculate. Yes. Like, Yo, her and Hana right. always have, like, the best outfit. Yeah, and Toru, like, sometimes... The outfit, like I don't remember what it is, but it's like like the turtle. Like she has like a black. Yeah, the turtleneck with the yeah. with the like a uh, skirt. Yeah, the yellow skirt. She wore it to like uh, visit Hatri. Yeah, episode that's... seven. I still remember. It's my favorite of hers. <laughs> yeah, same. But then Megami brings up a point that I really liked about how some like relationships are like love just takes time, so it really wasn't all for nothing. And I I was like, amen. He always says such good things. Yeah. <laughs> he says these wise things and the, he's just this little boy. I know. Just wise beyond his years. And he loves being, he's a, uh, his heart flutters being surrounded by older women. Yeah, he says that again. But then we get the next day and, um, actually, no, wait. I think after that, we have the scene with, uh, Reen and Ren. Mm-hmm. Which was really small, but, like, it's just, um, Reen's telling Rin, like, oh, I know you're looking for something. You want me to help you? And then, like, that's it. And it's kind of, like, uh, sketchy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, she's just a, uh, yeah, sketchy, sketchy person. Yes. But then, yeah, now Toru, after that, Toru comes home the next, like, morning. And she sees her scarf. Like, well, she's looking for someone, first of all. There's no one home. And she's like, okay. She sees her scarf. And then Kyo's home. And he washed it. And they had the cute scene where she, like, Smacks him with it, even though it's wet still. I know, it's so cute. <laughs> yeah. And, um... I like how she can be more playful with him. Yeah, and then I love how, like, Yuki comes up and sees him being playful, and then he smiles, because he's just happy mm-hmm. that they're happy. Or, well, at least that Toru's happy, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about Kyo. Yeah, he's like, I, I mean, if Kyo makes her happy, I guess. <laughs> and then Shigure comes in, and they just kind of talk about, make fun of Yuki's cooking. So, you know, it's like a happy kind of ending. And, um, mm-hmm. so yeah, and the lights coming in for the window, and it's really nice. So, you know, always has like that kind of happy ending with Fruits Basket. If they can. The interesting thing about Fruits Basket is they always have these happy ending episodes, but it always feels like a band aid. Like, <laughs> it's like, no, it's not really a happy ending, is it, Fruits Basket? You know, <laughs> like, it's almost like Taru convincing herself it's a happy ending, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Until next week. No, yeah, more pain. Yeah. It's like the lesson was kind of like to slowly find the truth. They're just slowly, um, like oh, Megami said, you know, like some things take time. So 
that was kind of the lesson of the whole episode. But yeah, my favorite part of the episode was because I'm Kyo Freak was the scarf scene and <laughs> <laughs> I just love dramatic stuff. So I like all the, I like the Akito and Ren stuff the best. I think I just like them like the dramatic and the sad. But I just I watch Fruits Basket to get sad. <laughs> yeah understandable i i watch it for i don't know everything i get sad and happy yeah so it gives me both <laughs> yeah same we go ahead to episode two then yep sounds good okay this one oh boy this, oh, this episode, episode two huh two episodes in we're already here i was like i said i was like evil laughing before i watched this uh, <laughs> so it was called the that's an unwavering truth and uh so it starts out with a uh, little sugar a Giving little Akito the flower. Yeah. Tell me what you think about this. Because Shigurai looks like 14 there. And Akito looks like 8. And it just weirds me out a little bit. I mean, it is kind of... They do have a little bit of age gap. But it's not that much. It's like... She was well, no, I'm, I'm. I think that they're fine now because yeah. they're both in their twenties. But exactly. if it started when she was like eight and he was like fourteen, mm-hmm. like imagine being a fourteen-year-old, be like, yeah, I have a crush on this eight-year-old. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know. But you know, I just kind of got to ignore it because fruits basket <laughs> is not the best with age gaps. We'll just leave it there. <laughs> it's just kind of. It's like uh, you like the series, just kind of gotta pretend it. You just gotta be like that meme where it's like I pretend I do not see it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, but um, but he says, like, he pretty much tells her, like, that he likes her, and that's the unwavering truth. It's uh, Yeah, he does at the beginning, yeah, I believe. Yeah, there's the title right there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's said twice this episode. Oh yeah, well, yeah, he did, because later. But then he goes to, like, Toru, and she's uh, making the paper flowers um, for mm-hmm. a cool fe- uh, was it the school festival? Graduation. Graduation, thank you. I was like, it wasn't that. Yeah, because they're about, they're making them for the seniors, and they're about to become seniors. Yeah, which is crazy. But anyway. (laughs) Yeah. The clock's ticking down for you, Kyo. (laughs) Oh, gosh, no. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) So, but Shigure comes in and, like, asks her about it, and she's, like, showing him, and I think he, he, like, either makes one or takes one. Like that, she made one or two. She tries to like ask Shigure about Akito being a girl, but then it just comes out like awkward and she can't. And she's like, Ugh. again, he's like, is it really that bad? <laughs> For real, Shigure just not reading the room. Yeah. And, um, but then I liked the reference she had where like she opened a like, little canister and she said like all the things that Kurno told her is like a dark well to her. Like she just doesn't mm-hmm. like go down that. <laughs> <laughs> that one. Yeah, and Taru, Taru's not in the best place. <laughs> no, yeah. But then, oh, it was so funny. When I was watching this episode, I was, like, drinking my tea. And, like, right after that scene, it, like, it, like flips to Machi real quick. And she's looking at, like, Yuki in the window. But, like, I mm-hmm. didn't know it was coming. So I almost choked on my tea. Because like, I saw uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, Machi. <laughs> uh, me every time I see Machi on screen, honestly. <laughs> So she just sees Yuki. Then there, then we get to see like little Momiji. I think this is a might be the last time, but I don't know. We see. Little- yeah, probably. Most likely, and he should be the same height as Toru at this point. Yes, I know. Everyone's mad about that, but at the same time, eh. yeah, he grows. Yeah, it's not that big of a deal, but it just would make his. It would have been nice to see him slowly grow up in the series, but I can understand that it's hard to do that. Mm-hmm. Like in an animated show where you have to like you have like models and you're like this character you you know you got to keep them on model. Mm-hmm. So if they tried to make him slowly grow taller, the problem could have been like oh well they accidentally made him shorter in the scene like that's later. <laughs> you know they probably just wanted to do a clean cut like this is short Momiji and then we're gonna do tall Momiji and there's no mix up there's no in between. <laughs> <laughs> yep, pretty much. Go for the year. To be fair, that's really what be happening in when you're in like middle school, high school. You'd yeah. really just sprout up out of nowhere, especially boys. Yep, yeah, that's true. Um, but I did like so the scene. I kind of like I noticed with Momiji though, like they're just like talking. I forget what they're talking about, but they're just having a good time. And then he has to go. Oh well. Oh, he talks about how he wanted to repeat a year, but because he wants to like be there when like his sister comes. But obviously, that's not gonna work because she's <laughs> so young. Yeah. I feel like that line was so weird because people were like, wait, what is she? Because she's like eight. Yeah, I know. I think he was just saying it because he said his dad worried about it just because he said it. 
and it just kind of mm-hmm. like his dad, you know, how he is. Um, Omichi's <laughs> dad really did him so dirty. He was like, I'll love you twice as much. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, all right, bye. I'm going with my other family. You can hang out with the Tori. Yeah. And, but I always thought, I thought it was interesting because, like, it shows, like, um, Momiji, like, let go of her hand and he goes over to Haru. And, like, that, like, the fact that it shows that, and then she's like, oh, I can't even talk to Momiji about Kurino yeah. anymore. She's, like, so alone yeah. right now in, the, in this point in the series. She has, like, nobody she can confide in. She's holding all this stuff in. And then also she, like, thinks about how would they feel if they knew that. And then, of course, she thinks of, like, Kyo mainly. Mm-hmm. But anyway, then all of a sudden, like the Yuki fan club comes running by, <laughs> like with their comedy skit and jumping by. I don't know how to explain it. It was oh, so a lot of people um didn't know. They thought that they were just wearing their bandanas wrong to like look dumb. Um, <laughs> but actually, in Japan, uh, wearing your bandana like that is like a stereotypical burglar outfit it's like how we yeah. picture like the burglar wearing the stripes and the mask you mm-hmm. know they pictured that that's like because i think there's like i was like how burglars used to be back in the day in like mm. old timey or at least that's how they were portrayed mm. so that was a reference to that they were like dressed up as stereotypical burglars they weren't just wearing the bandanas <laughs> wrong <laughs> but yeah they still they still yuki's flowers that he made <laughs> and the class is like thieves come back here and <laughs> um one of them did like a front flip down the steps yeah. <laughs> i was like okay <laughs> so then they're like oh well we'll just make kyo like make the flowers and kyo's like i already made mine and they're gone too and like so apparently kyo has like, yeah. a secret fan club too i guess or just mm-hmm. fan group. and one of them is the girl that confessed him yep. at the festival yep. she's so pretty like for a side character i don't know maybe it's just her hair and the the um blue shirt that she wears mm-hmm. she looks like she could be like a like a on not like a main character, like the main cast, but like you know, like to, uh, the student council member type person. So yeah, I, I've always thought she kind of looked pretty too because of her hair. Then so Kyo has to make new flowers too, anyway, apparently. And then they all kind of realize all at once. It's so funny. They're like, "Wait, does that mean we have to make Yuki's flowers?" And they're like, "Let's go get them." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for real. They had no motivation before they realized they would have to do work. Yeah. So and then they're like, "Toru, you like." Man, the fort, okay? And she's like, oh, oh <laughs> she has to stay. <laughs> and, of course, Kyo's there, too. So, uh, I remember in the manga, they were like, she was like, she was like, you, you're in charge of the fort. And she was like, what does that mean? And Kyo's like, it just means you stay here, okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, her's so cute. Uh, let's see. Now, then we get to Yuki, a little part, a Yuki scene, which I love the scene, where he's, like, walking around, and he's, like, trying to help people, and they're like, oh, no, it's okay, Yuki. Like, you don't have to strain yourself. Like, yeah. <laughs> and he asks, like, and they're all, like, flipping out because, oh my gosh, Yuki asked for us to, if he could help us. And, um, but then he kind of looks out the window and sees a group of friends and he's just kind of, like, smiles and he goes, that looks like fun. And it's, I don't know why, but it made me go, like, oh. Uh, it's like he's finally has his own group so he doesn't have to be super insecure about not having friends anymore. Yeah. And you can just, it's kind of like, um, the same scene, like him smiling at Kyo and Toru, like he's not insecure about it or anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's not insecure about not having friends anymore because he finally has friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Then we were, like Machi's like running up to him and she she's like she's like breathing hard. He's like, whoa, are you, what what's going on? <laughs> Hurry, like what? And um, she's like. And she's like, I was trying to find you, and he's like, Did you tell? Did you, what? Why did you need me? And he's, she's like, Oh, it's nothing, or something. Like she like, Yeah, for real, I love her. It's nothing, and she walks away, and he's like, What the? And then she's like, Well, you were wandering around so much, and he's like, I was on. <laughs> anyway, and she was like, Well, I was trying to find you and and say hello. That's all I wanted to do. You know, that's all she wanted. <laughs> why? Why is that your machi voice? I don't know. <laughs> it's so funny. I was trying to <laughs> like you give her this deep voice. I don't know. It's so funny. I like it though. I, I like that know. voice for machi. I just kind of got sassy and I started talking like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. I was like, that's a that's a cool machi voice. Yeah, machi does not sound like that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so then Yuki realizes that she was like 
looking for him and how like she could have just said hello to him like later like at the student council meetings or whatever and so he like gives her like he blushes and he gives her like a little head pat yeah and they're so like clumsy together it's really cute (laughs) and then she throws the flower at his face (laughs) and he's like what's this she's like it's a flower and he's like it's not like it (laughs) okay so then we go back to uh Kyo and Toru at the fort or whatever <laughs> in, the cl- <laughs> in the classroom. Uh, she actually sees like birds flying, and that's what makes her think of Kurano. And mm-hmm. that's when she like kind of brings up to Kyo. She kind of just goes, "What if like someone you know had their curse broken?" Like, and then Kyo just gets like mad because he's like, "Don't even like ask that," you know, like. That- yeah. And of course, that makes her sad. <laughs> so. And, and she's like, God, I really cannot talk about this with anybody, huh, Q? Yeah, and I always thought that was, like, it, gets, it got me because, like, you know, she was like, I can't talk to Momiji. And so the person she turns to is Kyo, and he's just like, no. <laughs> like, understandably so, but still. Yeah. yeah. But then, of course, like, Kyo sees that she's, like, about to cry, and he gets all nervous. And I love that part. He's, like, flipping out. He's like, oh, I didn't mean to say it like that, and all this stuff. Like, we kind of see from, like, I like that we see from Toru's point of view, because you just kind of see the flower. So Kyo gives her one of the flowers, just to, you know, try to cheer her up. And mm, kinda... That's so cute. I know. Yeah. I liked the Yuki and Machi scene, but in the manga. Yeah. Manga's just good. But. <laughs> yeah. Read the manga, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you can finish. Actually, you know what? Finish the anime blind first, and then go read the yeah, manga. Yeah, yeah. But, anyway. Then it, like. Because then they come in and they interrupt Tor- Toru and Kyo, of course, and they got the flowers back. And yeah. <laughs> and Kyo acts like, yeah. what's going on? He literally like looks above Toru. Like, what? Yeah, they're always getting interrupted. Kyo is not having it. But then everyone's getting a flower because then, like, Shugari gives Akito a flower. And mm-hmm. she's all like, Do you remember? And he's all like, What are you talking about? Remember what? Oh my God. He's so- I. Oh my gosh. I could never. <laughs> Like, I just get so pissed off at Shigure this episode. I know. Like, I have nothing against Akigure, like, yeah. shippers, just so you know. There's nothing wrong with the ship, but this episode just pisses me off <laughs> with how Shigure acts, you know what I mean? Yes. But it also, you know, the toxicity of it all, like, is what makes it interesting. So I, I love it, but it's like, I love it, but I hate it. <laughs> oh, and then, like, it's all of a sudden it cuts to Toru and Yuki cleaning dishes and Toru's all of a sudden, sudden like, oh yeah, I wonder what, like, where, why haven't I seen, like, Rin in a while? Or Rin, sorry. Rin in a while. Mm-hmm. And so she's like, I should go check on her. And so again, it's kind of that whole, like, mysterious thing about what's, like, leading up to something, obviously. Yeah. And then we get to see Michan because of that, which I almost forgot. Yeah. She was in this episode. I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, I like her. I wish you could see her more. Yeah. And then also we see Shiguri's parents. <laughs> so, like, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. They don't look old enough to be his parents, but you know what? That's Fruits Basket. <laughs> yeah. Except for Kyo's dad, who's, like, ugly and old. And Toro's grandpa, who's just old. Yeah. He's just a little old man. He's a nice little old man. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Then Michan, like, gets to see Akito, and they kind of talk about how, like, Akito is like twenty something years old. We kind of find that out, mm-hmm. and yeah, like and, early twenties. But I was so funny. I didn't. I was reading the chapter before I like a while ago before I re- watched this episode. But like, I never noticed how like Shigeru's this like she's like wow like the Soma family is like really like uh, like I don't know elite or whatever. And then Shigeru's like, yeah, yeah Ritsu, you said you have a status gap, and she's like oh. <laughs> I, I like Ritsu and uh, Michan together. I wish you could see them, like, on a date. I think they'd be so cute. Yes, they are cute. I just loved how he, like, just kind of stabbed her with that. Anyway, just <laughs> yeah. <for sure. laughs> and so, but then he goes uh, with her somewhere, and and Akito sees them, like, go off to wherever they're going, and... He's, like, intentionally looks at Akito, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm with another woman. Then it kind of goes back to the phone call between Shigeru and Kurano. Uh, they, I always love that phone call. It's like bad, but I also love mm-hmm. that scene. Cause... Yeah, it's like everything with Shigure this episode. You're just like, Shigure. <laughs> Shigure. It's like a juice, <laughs> juicy fruit. That's what I call it. 
<laughs> I remember Breezy. I was watching Breezy. He's like, "Ooh, it's getting juicy," and I was like, <laughs> "Juicy fruits." <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. But anyway, so he pretty much just tells Corona like how much he like hates him <laughs> for what he did does of Akito, and and then like. Then Akurino, though, says back, like, you should be nicer and, like, to Akito, pretty much. Is what yeah. He asks. And, and then he's like, it's obvious that, like, she only wants, like, one person. So then we get the, oh, then we get the scene, like, the scene scene. Uh, the scene. The scene. <laughs> like, in the, like, well, first of all, he didn't say, like, he's supposed to, like, say hi to Akito, like, during their dinner or whatever, and he didn't. Hmm. And so, like, apparently that's, like, you know, very rude. He literally negs... Do you, I don't know if that's a common term. Do you know what negging means? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know. Oh. He literally negs her the first thing he sees her. He's like, oh, wow, you look so masculine. <laughs> right. Like, oh my god, Shigure, what the hell? Yeah. He, like, does that, and then he, like... um, Then she, then she's like, well... Who was that woman you were with? And he's like, oh, it's just me, John. Like, it's no big deal. And then and then she's like, uh, leap with her. And then it was like, and then, yeah. Then it gets into where everyone was like, what? Because yeah. Pretty much, yeah. She, he's, he slept with, uh, with her, her mom. And yeah, it's just like, still, what? Oh my God. So. It's, and like... N- Oh my gosh. Like, her horrible mother who, like, we just know who has treated her horribly, and it's like, well, you know, yeah. I slept with her because you slept with Kurano. Yeah, and like, yeah, and he's like, oh yeah, because you slept with Kurano, and I'm like, you slept- it's like, it's very, two very different things, Sugar, right? <laughs> you went on a whole new level. Yeah, exactly. You could have slept with anybody else, but you chose this woman, you know? Yeah, I know, it's like... It's not- And the funny thing about it is we don't even know if they were, like, supposed to be in an exclusive relationship or if they, like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, and also I think the thing that makes it different is, you know, intent behind it. Akito is a very bad person, obviously. But in Sleeping with Kurno, she she wasn't doing it because she wanted to upset Shigure. She was doing it, one, because she thought it was her right as the god, which she has, you know, obviously been believed her whole life and whether that's right or wrong is a different story but she believes it's right and also she wants to keep Kurno around she's scared of losing him meanwhile Shigure is like oh man I'm gonna go sleep with Akito's mom to piss her off I know <laughs> <laughs> yeah you said like because the thing is like, right after he says that Akito's like I can do what I want because I'm God and I can do what I want Doesn't mm-hmm. affect. so then you know like by then like if you were just watching the anime and you can't realize it, to, like you can see that it's like obviously Shigure is just wanting like the bonds to be broken and and just to have Akito to himself. It's like, oh man, Shigure, like, on, it's it's like so crazy that he did that. Like, it's like it's so funny though to think like it's messed up, but it's like, oh man, the, like thinking about like season one and then getting here somehow. I know. Keep arguing, and Sugar is like, "Well, we're getting nowhere, so I'm just gonna leave." And then she kisses him, and then like he eats off her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and they do the shit was so wild in the manga when I first read it. I think I was like 15. I was like, "What is going on?" <laughs> also, can I have a like? Can we talk about Akito and Kurno? Because that's, that's something that like. Erno's like, I gotta stay by her side. And I'm like, wait, so does that entail sleeping with her? Like, what? I don't know, know what I mean? Yeah. I've always thought about that, too. I'm like, what? is that just... What is that? Maybe it's supposed to, like, reflect real-life relationships where people do stuff. Maybe mm. they'll stay with somebody out of pity. Which, yeah. you know, we see, yeah. we see more of that come up in later stuff. You know, talk, it talks about that later in the series. I won't get into. Yeah, maybe... I guess Akito wanted to do that, because... He craves intimacy, I think. Mm-hmm. Obviously, yeah. You know, so I think that's where it's going, but it's just so crazy that it's like Fruits Basket, and then we're getting into all this drama <laughs> yeah. about sexual relationships. The most soap opera part of Fruits Basket. It's like, I see yeah. your mother. I live for it, though. Then, I'm trying to think. But I did, like, then it showed, like, uh, uh, again, Trigger and Akito when they were, like, younger. And I never noticed, like, it's, again, another thing I never noticed but makes sense was, like, um, Shigure, like, he gives her the flower, and then he says, like, 
eternity is here and he like puts like her hand on his heart and i'm like oh you know that makes sense because like she's thinking that like she'll be loved for eternity from like the zodiacs but Mm -hmm. trying to tell her like no i love you like forever like it doesn't matter about the zodiac you know and that's yeah so and i was like oh that's kind of sweet even though you're messed up (laughs) yeah I love I loved I think we kind of skipped over it but the the visualization of how twisted their love has become where it starts off in that pure scene even with the weird age gap it's like a pure scene and then it cuts to like Akito and Kurno laying in bed naked together yeah in the yeah. beginning of that it's like oh god At the very end uh, we do have Toru trying to find out what happened uh, to Rain and like goes to her school and there's these mean girls that are like like, oh, wow, she has friends? I don't think so. But anyway, but like, <laughs> but they pretty much say that she went somewhere far to get help, like her health or something. And then, then like, Toru's like, okay. <laughs> so yeah, that was that episode. It's starting out strong this season. The seasons aren't, it's like off running already. I feel like it's gonna be like a pretty strong season in general. Like, mm-hmm. like every, a lot of stuff's gonna happen. All right. Well, this was fun. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I really enjoyed being able to do this again. Yeah. Um. So we're gonna do. So we're still planning to do two episodes every time. So like every other week. Yeah. Or... If that's good with you, I okay. think that'd be good. No, that'd be good with me because I know we both we're both busy with other stuff, mm-hmm. with real life stuff. Sadly. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> so, okay. Well, that was good. Um. Thanks everybody for watching. And you want to go follow Prince Jessica? She, her like my Twitter link is down below in this video. So yes, thank you for that. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> and then, yeah, if you want to keep watching, subscribe. If you want to listen, you can go to my Discord. It's all. And if you want to watch Fruits Basket, which you should, yeah. it's all down there. Talk about episodes three and four next time. So yeah. Bye. Well, thanks. Bye. Uh, are you ready to get into spoilers? By the way, or is yeah. there anything else you want? Do to Do spoilers. Uh, what do you want to talk about? All right. Okay. So, you know, Earth's Basket is more about you know relationships, bonds, you know, tra- generational trauma, mm-hmm. stuff like that, and um. Yeah, I think it's less about plot. So if I'm scared that people will get hung up on like, why would the per why you know they you know because all this time they're like, how are we gonna break the curse? But then nobody breaks the curse. The curse just breaks itself. You know? Yeah. No, I get you. But I mean, I'm scared people are gonna be let down by that. Like, I I think it's fine, but I'm scared that that's gonna be a thing. Yeah. No, I get that because honestly, like. I I'm say I personally like it because it's more focused on characters. Yeah, game. me too. So it's like I, I would say people who are watching it more for the plot. I don't. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean the plot's good, but like it's, it's basically isn't the best series for plot. It's better for characters. Yeah, it's, like, it's still really good for plot. It's, yeah, though. it still has a good like storyline through it. And, like, obviously, I like how everything kind of connects, like you know, down the road and kind of thing. Like that's why yeah. he said that, and that's another thing. So I'm excited for people who've like first watched it to like watch it again and be like, oh, that's why like Kyo did this or like Yuki, you know. It's so cool because like every action can be explained exactly by something. Uh, yeah. Um, all I put for mine spoiler stuff was just um. So I know <laughs> I already talked about like the scarf on the street scene, but I was like, again, mm-hmm. I was like, Kyo on the street sees a scarf on the road. Saves it. Represents. Toru like Yoko. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm like. Oh my god, he's having a war flashback <laughs> to Kyoko's death. Yeah. What did you think about the end song? Do you think it spoiled too much? A little. Like, but like, well, I feel yeah. like I still won't catch it too much. Like, there's some things where I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, like, eh, I don't know. It just it seems like it matters how close of a fan you are. Like, if you're actually, mm-hmm. like, watching it, like, I feel like Breathy probably got some spoilers there, you know? Like, he's... Yeah, But, like, yeah. <laughs> if you're just watching it for fun, you're probably like, okay, whatever.
It's so funny seeing people who are like fans versus like casual viewers because casual viewers are like so caught off guard by the Shigure and Akito stuff. Yeah. But like people who are like super into it figured that shit out in like the end of season one somehow. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I wrote in spoiler. Okay, I just wrote like random stuff. I wrote in spoilers like so the scene where like Toru like let go of Momiji's hand and like she went to Ki like isn't she like relied on Kyo? I was like, you know how they drawn like, <laughs> Momiji's kind of the love triangle, but not really. I was yeah. Like, that's the big. That's the biggest twist in Fruits Basket is that it's not Yuki, Kyo, and Toru. It's it's Kyo, Momiji, and Toru. Yeah, I was just like, but the part where she like goes to Kyo for like to to like talk to him about kind of the curse being broken, but not really. I was like, Momiji. Yeah, she was gonna tell you. <laughs> I'm like, you almost. <laughs> ah, no, I'm kidding. Oh, I put something on here about how I think it's interesting because when Yuki was like looking out of the window to look at the group of kids. That were like uh, having fun. He smiled and like was like, I, "Oh, that's good." And then there's a part where Kyo was like looking out of the window, like at the scenery, because he was like after when he gave the flower to Toru. And I'm like, it's really interesting because I always thought how like Yuki always seems to be like looking into someone else's like world. Like he used to look, you know, into the classroom and see Kyo and Toru and them having fun. And he looks in, like, mm. into someone else's world where Kyo's always looking out, so it makes me think how Kyo already feels trapped because he knows he's gonna be like, captured. That's so smart. You're getting like 50 layers deep into this. <laughs> I love it. I, I told my roommate this, and I was like, I'm sorry. I'm just o- overanalyzing everything. <laughs> I mean, you're probably right. It's, like, the writing is so good. That's probably true. Like, the stu- like when you pointed out that um, the first Akito scene and the first Ren scene, that shit blew my mind. I was like, what? Oh my god, I gotta go tell everybody about this now. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, so... But anyway, that's all I have for my spoiler notes, which aren't that much of spoilers. It's just... Yeah, I don't really have too much else to talk about either. Alright, well, this was fun. <laughs> yeah, it was. I really enjoyed being able to do this again. Yeah. Um. So we're gonna do... So we're still plan to do two episodes every time so like every other week yeah or... if that's good with you i okay. think that'd be good no that'd be good with me because i know we both we're both busy with other stuff mm-hmm. with real life stuff sadly <laughs> <laughs> true <laughs> so okay well that was good um thanks everybody for watching and uh you want to go follow follow for uh i can't talk <laughs> you want to go follow friends jessica she, her like uh, my Twitter link is down below in this video. So yes, thank you for that. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> and then, yeah, if you want to keep watching, subscribe. If you want to listen, you can go to my Discord. It's all. And if you want to watch Fruits Basket, which you should, yeah, it's all down there. So, um, yeah, and we'll just talk about episodes three and four next time. So yeah, bye. Thanks. Bye.